I'm so glad to see you all here. It's too bad there are only one, two, three actually visitors and four volunteers. More volunteers than visitors. Well, maybe next time TCC will do a better job advertising, things like that, promoting, but so far they didn't succeed, obviously. So this is my last time I'm going to talk about Russia. <laughs> well, anyway, добро пожаловать в Россию. I'll try to be brief. <laughs> Welcome to Russia. Okay, you can see there on the table a samovar, like the one here, just different colors. This was actually given by the mayor of our sister city, Zelenograd, to my relative in Buy Kostroma region, four hours away from Moscow. And that one is mine, was given to me by deputy mayor of Zelenograd. I guess you're all aware of the fact that Tulsa has a sister city in Russia. Huh? So, yes, I, well, I had connections, not anymore. But because the old mayor passed away, the, well, the new one is, I know him, he's a friend of my relative, but I don't think they're too much interested in, having a relationship. But people are, as you're probably aware, in July, I guess, there were uh, six journalists from Zelenograd. Have you met any of them? Well, you were gone probably, right? But some of you did meet. Well, I met them and you met. Yeah, there are nice people and anyway, they are very much interested in trying to promote. There is some literature about Zelenograd and Oh, that's right. We had a dinner here. I forgot. We were all sitting at this table, right? It was a, you know, Global Alliance had a big party, and they were here. Yes, that was nice. Anyway, so some of us, as you know, is a very important part of Russia. <laughs> of course, they don't ever use it. They just keep it for decoration, you know. But I have several. I have one antique one that, I, of course, I'm not going to use. It costs too much. But that's a real one, you know, where you put... Uh, coals in it and get the water going and stuff so that's antique so no way I've got this one but it's not fixed for this voltage but then I have a simple one that I used before that was fixed or kind of redone for voltage here and I'm using it it's, except I guess we use it so much it's leaking so I cannot do it anymore <laughs> anyway back to other stuff you aware of samovar, right? So look at it again before you leave. What does samovar mean in Russian? Means that it's um, uh, a self-cooker, because, right, because what you do, of course, you boil water in this part, but on the top you put a um, teapot, and then you add hot water to the tea leaves, so, and while the teapot is sitting on the top, getting all the steam from down, hot water, so it makes tea. So it's just basically for tea making. Okay, enough about some of our... Here, are, uh, you probably saw pictures of Russia, Moscow, St. Petersburg, and all these famous places, so I decided to show something that normally you wouldn't probably see. This is my distant relative. Well, not blood relatives, but relatives. And that's in the country. The museum, as you can see, all made of wood. And there are a lot of those there. Now, this is something interesting. Uh, 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 my other relatives are making, uh, building their own house. It's in a fence, as you can see. Well, this guy, so guess who, Vladimir Vladimirovich, but whose brows are those? Not his, Brezhnev and all the medals. I don't think Putin has as many medals and orders. He has a lot of expensive watches and nice houses and apartments, but I don't think he got himself that yet. 
anyway. You all heard of Brezhnev, Leonid Brezhnev, octogenarian, who ruled Russia as long as Putin, actually even longer. Well, hopefully Putin will retire soon, or somebody will retire him. That's, you can imagine how I feel about Mr. Putin. This is uh, in the country, the house that's not dacha, but that's like a regular house with a lot of growing stuff there. This is dacha, and that's near our sister city, Zelenograd. The two-story small house. Not like Putin has, of course. They even have to use the outer house, you know. They don't have shower, but they just go there for relaxation like this. And that's my cousin Alex, who used to work for Ministry of Defense. But he got out of there, and now he works for a private company. <clears throat> Much happier now, but works seven days a week to support himself and the family. And of course, this is kind of like shashlik, but not quite. As you know, Russians like to do that in the country, and in Dacia in particular. That's his car in the background. And of course, before the shashlik or any serious meal, we have to have some appetizers. There is some fruit, like lemons, there is bread, and of course, not vodka but Bourbon, for some reason, he is very attached to that drink, more than vodka. But as you know, vodka is a very common drink in Russia. This is my hometown, Yaroslavl, and that's my niece. And that's Volga on this side, and Kotorosl, the tributary of uh, Volga. And that's the location where the, my hometown was founded more than 1,000 years ago. I went there in 2011 to, for the celebration. And the, the pagans lived he, here. But then, of course, <clears throat> Yaroslav the Wise, who was already Christian, decided to baptize poor pagans. You know who pagans are, right? They have several gods, and Bear was one of their gods, kind of like a sacred cow for India, and they had the bear uh, for this particular tribe in Russia. Well, so, of course, Ivan, I mean, I, well, he was the terrible, but it was Yaroslav the Wise, the founder. He came with, you know, tanks and all this other equipment, well, a thousand years ago. I'm joking, as you can imagine, right? And, of course, poor pagans, all, they had nothing, really. All they had was a sacred bear in, uh, living in the cave. So they thought if they let bear out, then the Christians will get scared and run away. Well, needless to say, Yaroslav the Wise was really wise. <laughs> Just used the axe on the bear, and the bear fell. So poor pagans gave up and were baptized right there in the rivers there. I don't know how many were drowned, probably, because the way they baptized them was not very nice. Anyway, my niece, uh, can you read what she says on the <laughs> T-shirt? Egoistka. Well, I guess she, you know what, egoistka? Egoist, egoist, yeah. I don't know why she put that kind of shirt, but I guess she is the one. That's... Yaroslav at night with the fountains there, and that's a church, a cathedral actually, that was built for the millennium of my hometown. And it was destroyed, of course, after the revolution, but then they rebuilt it. That's downtown Yaroslav, and of course, that's not Disneyland, but they have all kind of entertainment for kids and adults. My hometown had a first drama theater founded in my, uh, I mean, the first Russian drama theater was founded in Yaroslavl in 1755. Of course, that's not the original building. It was wooden and it was burned several times. So in 19th century, they built uh, the stone one. That's the cathedral that you saw from in the, um, even uh, in the previous, that's more countryside, my relative Luba, at the cheese fair. You can see that cheese and a mouse, and that's uh, 
bit in Deevka Park, that's she with her daughters. And that's one of her daughters makes leather um, pieces like sh shoes and purses, and that's at the fair. She was kind of advertising her stuff and selling. Sold some. Other people do all other things. Just a small fair, kind of like at the fairgrounds, you know. To add to their either pension for older people or to their salaries, which, as you can imagine, not very high. This is my other relative who lives in Moscow. You already saw her husband making shish kebab. And there was a fair, flower fair, in Moscow recently. And you could kind of take a picture in that interesting dress made of real flowers. That's another piece of art in the Pushkin Museum. I uh, got it from Tanya, my friend, who got it from her friend in Moscow. And that's, I don't know if you've been to a Pushkin Museum. Mark, you probably have, and I have. Have you been there too? Yeah. And they have impressionists. They have all kind of interesting stuff. But this is, thank God it's not a live horse. horse. If it were live, I wouldn't put this on them. But that's what I actually sent the picture to Marina and said, here you are, modern art. How do you like it? She said, no, I haven't seen it. Said, well, I told her that was Louis Vuitton Foundation sponsored that exhibit of modern art. So there are more outside of Moscow places. Here's Marina again. There is, you know, along Arkansas River, there are a lot of sculptures. Also in Russia, they have those. And that's in Moscow. Now, that's a forest, Russian forest looks like, with my sweet uh, niece of mine. More modern art in Moscow, and that's Marina. And that's here, the modern art, but then there is a church, old church in Moscow, with my relatives from St. Petersburg visiting. Now, you can take some Sapsan train from Moscow to St. Petersburg, and it takes only four hours. Before, the last time I went, I, I had to go overnight, eight or nine hours, but they have now this way. So you see modern art and then old church. This is, um, of course, I read a lot on Facebook about poor quality of Russian medicine and clinics and everything. This is one of the fancy clinics in my hometown or near the hometown where they come people from Moscow and other places, if you have joint problems, and this is like dispenser or sanatori, they call, two, three weeks, and they get really fancy here. Of course, it's uh, private, so you pay money, but that's nice. My cousins went there. Now, when I graduated from Moscow State University, of course, we didn't have gowns. We had this communist, what's her name? Uh, being the commencement speaker, ah, I keep forgetting. Ah? No, 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 no. The American, American communist, Angela Davis. She was uh, my, at my commencement, but we didn't have gowns. Now this is my cousin's uh, cousin in Saint Petersburg, and look, all those look alike, like a Russian flag, you know, three color. So. They are celebrating it like here. This is a little doggy that was adopted from a Kastrama shelter. Like, I don't know, if maybe you saw on Facebook, I'm raising funds for that shelter because some people try to get rid of the shelter because they want that land. So they set fires several times to scare the people. The shelter actually takes the sick animals and homeless animals and takes care of them. And of course, people support them as much as they can. Government doesn't do much good, maybe occasionally. But anyway, uh, last time what they did, those people who want the land, they poisoned four dogs. And the fact is that they know who did it because they had cameras there. But nevertheless, police is still dragging 
their feet. Hopefully there will be some prosecution, but so far it's, nothing has been done. As you know, maybe, mushroom picking is a big hobby among Russians. And near Zelenograd, there are some nice forests. They didn't cut out yet like they do in Siberia, so they still have mushrooms. And Alex likes to, or Sasha, likes to collect mushrooms, pick mushrooms. You probably heard that there was a nuclear disaster not as big as Chernobyl. You heard about Chernobyl, right, years ago. But now there was in Severodvinsk. And of course, the government tried to cover it up. And if you can read it, that's the name of the city, Severodvinsk. And this is, there is no any radiation. Of course, this is Putin. That's his um, uh, peace mouse. Oops, sorry. Ooh. Okay, forgot, forgot, forgot. Previous, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then I need, still need previous. Well, okay, we'll get back to it. That's a map of Russia, and of course there is one more there. You can see closer. In Siberia, you heard about the flooding in Irkutsk and other areas that happened two months ago. And people, uh, students, young people from Mongolia came to help out. The government was very slow helping out the country. Uh, that was like in this area, Kemerova. Then there is another problem, was the fires in Siberia. And again, there are some facts showing that um, the forests were cut and then sold cheaply to China. And so to cover it up, they started fires there. So this is a Russian fire truck with all these flags. Not that it does much good, because they haven't done it in time, and there are still problems there. But the government, yeah, this is the floods in Irkutsk area. See? Kind of what's happening in some places in this country. Well, Putin, of course, visiting flooded areas. Look very serious. Trying to solve the problems. But so far, it's very little that was done by the government of Russia to help the people there. Well, sorry to leave on that bad note about Putin, and I see Nikita doesn't approve my dislike for Mr. Putin, I guess. No? Oh, by, uh, by the way, what's your attitude towards Putin, if you don't mind me asking you? Oh, boy, I don't like you, guy. Get out of here. Trump, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the Svidania means what? Goodbye. Until we see you again. Well, anyway, if you have some questions about my dislike for Putin or his like for Putin, please go ahead. Well, I actually had a Russian a student, Russian student in my class, and she also likes Putin. So I almost failed her. I wanted to fail her, but I couldn't, you know, because her Russian was pretty good. Anyway, any other thoughts? I think Mark likes Putin, too. Yeah, I agree. What's the? Not now. Now is much less. Now is like 51 or something. No, his rating's going downhill. No. And I try to promote that too. Well, I hope they stopped recording us. What do you think? I better get out of here. <laughs> Before Putin. <laughs> Potential students. Well, these two students are taking Russian at TU but they're volunteering here, which I appreciate very much. Nikita, I don't think, needs any Russian, but since he is for Putin, I think you should. Anyway, so no, maybe Tanya decides to take Russian, huh? 
Да. Окей, okay, go ahead, because I'm tired of talking. So, okay, now it's your time. <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that Irina taught me Russian uh, many years ago. I'm now 54, but so when I was in high school, I graduated high school in 82. So I studied Russian for two years um, after studying French for four years. And then I continued in college for a few years, and then I stopped studying Russian for maybe 10 years. But the, the basis, uh, the base, you know, uh, fun foundation of the language and the interest in the culture that she provided for me while I was in school really, you know, stayed with me in my heart. And when I had the first opportunity in my professional life to move to Russia, I did. I took that opportunity, and all of all of what she had taught me, all of the basics, you know, and the cultural elements were very important for me to adapt to to Russia and to you know because I, you know, I love Russia and I love the United States, but I also love Russia. I mean, my wife is Russian. My children are born in Russia, um, and I'm just really grateful for all of the contributions that she made as a native, you know, Russian to come to this country and then to share her not only knowledge but her the love of her country, you know, with with us so we could appreciate it and then and it led to you know my current I guess situation where I have family and I spent fifth you know 15 17 years in Russia um, but in, in no small part, thanks to Irina. So thank you, Irina. Well, thank you. And thank you for sharing everything you, <laughs> you have. <laughs>